Hello everyone and welcome to a new Sega Mega Drive dev tutorial. In the last video we covered how to use shadow and highlight mode to create these transparent sprites. While it is a very useful mode to use it does come with two major drawbacks. The first of course that it can only shadow or highlight i.e. It, it can only do a transparent black colour or a transparent white colour. That means that if you want to do a transparent yellow or green or red or blue or any other colour then you're out of luck. The second major drawback is the fact that if one highlighted or shadowed uh, sprite goes over on top of another one it will just completely delete the sprite behind. It won't cast a shadow and highlight on that sprite. Thankfully we have other methods available to us which don't use the shadow and highlight mode which will enable us to use not only have different colours not just black and white as a pseudo transparent colour but will also allow us to put one transparent sprite on top of another. We will return to using shadow and highlight mode in the next lesson where we'll be looking into how to use background tiles for shadow and highlight. However for now let's look at some non shadow and highlight ways of doing transparencies. The code we're starting off with is pretty much the same as we used in the previous lesson only this time we're using a background that uses two different palettes. If you don't remember how to do this then just check out the lesson I did last year. And as usual any Patreon supporters can go on Patreon and find the full completed code for the lesson there. Another thing to note is the fact that we're not using shadow and highlight mode here so get rid of that particular line if you have it in your code. You can see that we've declared the spectre sprite before the test palette sprite so that's the one that's going to appear above it. And without shadow and highlight mode uh, enable, you can see it's just two normal sprites with the ghost sprite appearing above the palette sprite. The effect we want to achieve here is to use this um, visibility kind of flicker effect to make it look like the ghost is transparent and is transparent above both the background and also the palette sprite behind it. The first step in terms of the code is create a timer to determine at which points the sprite is visible and when it's invisible. And we use that to create this flicker effect. You'll recall from last year's lesson on data types that U8 means an unsigned 8-bit integer. So pretty much it's from 0 to 255 and since we're only going uh, 0 to 1 that'll be fine for our purposes today. Rather than write all the transparency code within our uh, game loop let's create a separate function here. So again at the very top just before main we're going to um, create a function prototype. We're going to declare it here and you can call it whatever you want. Here I'm just calling it um, transparency function. Now at the bottom just after the main loop and before the handle input one we're just going to paste it here and we're going to start to actually write the function. We're going to have to tell the Mega Drive when we want the sprite to be physical and invisible and that's going to be determined by the timer. As is usual when we have these kind of conditions we're going to use if and else logical statements. Don't forget to use two equal signs as we always do when we're comparing whether a variable each equals a certain number. And remember at the top here when we declared it we used a single equal sign. It's a very simple thing but you won't believe the number of times that I had put a single equals within the if statement by mistake. SGDK has a special function to turn the sprite visible or invisible and that is the SPR underscore set visibility. You can see a description of the function on the right hand side here but thankfully it's pretty straightforward it just takes two pieces of information. First of all you're going to have to tell it which sprite you're going to turn visible or invisible and the second piece of information after the comma is to say whether you want to be visible or invisible. So if it's true it's going to be visible and if you set it to false it's going to be invisible. In this particular example we're going to um, apply the visibility to the spectre or the ghost sprite. So let's set it to true so it already starts off with true anyway but we'll set it to true here as well. And of course after that we're going to create a second condition where the sprite is set to invisible and that's how it's going to create our little flicker effect. To do that we use the same function as before but instead of setting it to true we're going to set it to false. Next up let's change the value of our timer every frame so within the if statement if timer equals zero add, uh, we're going to add one to the timer so we can do this two ways we can either write timer plus plus or we can write timer plus equals one. For transparency effects I think it's best that if you switch the um, visibility every single frame but for other effects for example if you want your character to flash a bit to show they have taken damage maybe you make it change every uh, maybe 10 frames and so on that might be a better way but for transparency so let's change every other frame. So remember that when we declare the variable we make it equal to zero this timer variable 
and then once it goes into the transparency function which of course we have to call within our game loop so let's do that now so within the while brackets uh, call the transparency function so every frame that function gets called it gets put to use and so in the first frame it's going to be the time is going to be equal to zero as we said at the very beginning so the if statement the zero is going to be activated so it's going to set the visibility to true which is true anyway so that's not going to make any difference and it's going to iterate the timer it's going to add one to the timer so the time will now become one and of course the else after statement afterwards will be skipped because the if statement has already been uh, determined as true and of course the second frame of the game will go through again this time the timer equals one so it's going to skip that first if it's going to go into the else and it will make the visibility four so the sprite will disappear of course we need a way to set the timer back to zero otherwise the sprout will never reappear again so within the else statement make it so that the timer is equal to zero so remember there's one equal sign here so that means that we have a nice loop where it's going to go through the timer is going to begin at zero and then every single time the transparency function is going to be called so the first time is called the um the time will be equal to zero so it's going to set the visibility to true then it's going to add one to the timer so the time will equal one and it's going to skip the else part here and then in the second frame remember there are 60 frames within a second it's going to call the transparency function again this time the time is going to be equal to one so it's going to skip the first if statement it's going to set the visibility to four it's going to make the sprite disappear then it will reset the uh, timer back to zero so the third frame is going to be called again. This time the timer is back at zero, so it's going to set the visibility to true. The sprite will appear again. It's going to add one to the timer, time equal one, and so on and so on. So this is going to make the uh, sprite flash on and off every frame. And if you save and compile, you should get this result here. So you can see the flashing ghost or spectre sprite, and uh, it's flashing so much that you can kind of see the both the background and the sprite behind it. Please bear in mind here that the fact I'm using this on an emulator on like a, a you know 144 hertz monitor and then it goes through YouTube, it might mean that the effect doesn't look quite as good as it does on a real CRT, on a real TV. But um, even here, it looks kind of okay. You can see the background behind, so the effect isn't so bad. Since we're in the Streets of Rage bar, let's discard with the, the Ghost and the Palace Sprite and let's use this kind of Lamp Sprite here. Now in the original of course is actually uh, using the foreground layer but to keep things simple today I'm just going to use it as a Sprite and because the Sprite will be very big I've reduced the size of it just so we can use it easier with an SGDK for this example. And I've also got a basic animation of Max here just to be behind the Lamp Sprite too. Using the same code as before, just with the sprite swapped out, let's first disable the transparency function within our while within our game loop. And so we can see what it looks like. So we're just going to see a solid yellow color. If we now reinstate the transparency function and of course make sure that the um, it's being applied to the lamp rather than max, unless you want him to be transparent, you'll see that we now have a kind of a semi-transparent yellow lamp color and again as with the previous example this will look much better on an actual uh, CRT TV but even here you can see the effect works quite well of course in the original game they didn't use a flashing effect to do the transparencies instead they went with this mesh pattern now on my emulator here with some filters applied it doesn't look too bad but playing on my real CRT with an RGB connection it doesn't really look that great you can see the um, dithered or mesh pattern quite clearly. In our code here I'm first going to show you how to do the mesh pattern then I'm going to give you an alternative which I think looks a bit better. The Sega Saturn has a hardware command where you can take a regular solid sprite and tell the hardware to make it like a mesh transparency pattern. In the Mega Drive we don't have that so we have to draw the sprite as a mesh to begin with. And this is how it looks in the game so um, again, I have some filters enabled, so it looks pretty decent. I can go up here into Kega Fusion. I can add some filters and take some off, and that'll make a difference to it here. So if I then disable the filter I had before, this is more what I see, like what I see when I play it on a on my Sony Triniton uh, CRT with an RGB cable. So the uh, the mesh effect, the dithering effect, is quite obvious, and it doesn't really look very transparent. If I change to like an RF filter here, you can see it definitely looks much more transparent now. But of course, like any uh, 
kind of old CRT with an RF connection, it does make the whole picture look a bit blurry. So it's always a trade off by having uh, these effects, for example, the waterfall in Sonic or the lamp in Streets of Rage here look better as a transparency, uh, but at the cost of having the rest of the picture look very blurry or having a nice clear crisp RGB presentation, but having the dithering not quite work. You could of course choose to use the mesh effect along with the transparency effect we created before, the flickering effect, and the result will look like this. Well that doesn't look too bad, I think I have a better way to use like a mesh effect but make it look a bit more transparent. Instead of flashing the sprite by making it um, visible and invisible, what we can do instead is to flip it horizontally. So we take the differing pattern and we keep flipping it horizontally then resetting it to normal. And as you can see here, it'll make the um, the coloured parts and the transparent parts, it make them alternate uh, by every single frame. And this should create a nice little transparency effect for us. There is a function within SGDK which allows us to flip the sprite or the tile. And I think we've used this before, but I'll just go for it now. So we use SPR underscore set H flip. So as you can see from the description, it sets whether the sprite is flipped horizontally or not. So just as with the um, the visibility one, we need two pieces of information. First, we have to tell it which sprite to flip, and then we have to say whether it be flipped or not. So in this first one, I'm gonna set it to false because that's kind of the default of how we've declared our sprite, that it's not been flipped. And in the else part, I'm gonna set it to true, but it doesn't really matter which way around you do these anyway. If we now save and compile, we'll get this result. As always, it will generally look a lot better on a actual CRT TV, but even on this emulator, I think you can see that I think it's in my opinion anyway, this is better than doing either the mesh alone or the flashing mesh, mesh or the flashing solid yellow color. So I think in my opinion, this is the best way, but feel free to experiment yourself with these different effects. And of course, you can also use this in conjunction with shadow and highlights. If you have some white bits or black bits that you want to be actually transparent and feel free to experiment with this. There's lots you can get out of it and uh, let me know how you get on. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in this kind of content, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm interested in this. And if you wish to support the channel further and want to get extra things, for example, the code for each lesson, then I have a patron and any support is much appreciated. You won't go unrewarded. Until next time. Farewell.